Welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue with more examples on time value of money calculations. Let's get started. So far, we have computed present value and future value. The next variable we're going to look at is the rate of return or interest rate or the compound growth rate. All these can be computed using the same model. This, why do we need to learn how to do this? And the reason is because oftentimes when you encounter an investment or even a loan, the interest rate or the return on the investment on the loan is not always obvious or is not clearly stated. The good news is that as long as we have all the cash flows associated with the investment or the loan, we can figure out what the actual rate is. So whenever you are investing, the most important question to ask is, how much money am I getting back and when? And the same is true when you borrow money. Ask very clearly, how much do I have to pay back when? And as long as you have those data, you can do the calculation yourself to figure out how much interest rate they are actually charging you or how much return you are earning on a particular investment. So this is a very important tool. Let's take a look at our first example. So here we said there is an investment that will pay you $1,200 in five years if you invest $1,000 today. Yes, what is the implied rate of interest? So what is the implied rate of return? So let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, you are asked to invest $1,000 today. So this is the beginning value of the, the investment. So this will be your present value you're going to get back $1,200. So that is your future value. Um, the investment horizon is five years. So this is your time period. Uh, we are not given any compounding, so sp special compounding um, assumptions. So we're going to assume that interest is compounded on an annual basis. Um, the most important reason we can assume that here is because uh, there's no additional cash flow. It's just $1,000 today, you get back $1,200. However, we have to be careful about which one we make as an inflow and which one we make as an outflow. Uh, given, given this problem, it will seem to make sense to make this an outflow, the present value to outflow. So in other words, you pay, so that's money, that's negative cash flow, you pay $1,000 today and you get back $1,200 in five years. Just like we have done with the other problem, uh, first let us work on creating your own model. So pause your video now, open up your Google spreadsheet, and let's create the structure of our model. So type in the legend, um, and when you're ready, come on back. All set? Let's go. We have determined that we're going to uh, assume that this is annual compounding. So the time unit is year. That's one time per year. So we are quite used to this. Uh, the time is five years. So make sure that you type in the time unit. Uh, annuity, we don't have any annuity amount, so we can make that zero. Present value, so remember we decided that we're going to make the present value the outflow negative. So we're going to pay out $1,000. So that's negative 1000 and we're going to get back $1,200. So future value is $1,200. We are not working with any annuity, so we can leave that blank. Here we're going to use the function. The fun name of the function is rate. So we'll type R-A-T-E, that's the name of the function. The input variable, the first one is number of period. So number of period for us is five years. So press comma. Next argument is payment per period. So that's the annuity payment. So again, that's zero, comma, moved on to present value. It's negative $1,000. Uh, future value is $1,200. Again, separated by comma. And the uh, annuity type, beginning or ending, is here. So, and then we finish our formula by the close parenthesis sign. We can enter our formula by pressing enter. So our this, uh, the implied rate of return on this investment is 3.71. And again, it's important because, uh, to put down the time unit. So it's 3.71% per year. 
In addition to creating your own model, you can also use the template. Uh, so if you open up the template, uh, you will want to use the tab that says rate. So go ahead and open the template and we'll uh, and we will work on the problem together. Uh, similar to your own model, the time unit we're working with is year. And so it's one times per year. The time is five years. Um, and the amount, annuity amount again is zero. Uh, the present value, we have to put that as negative. We're going to pay $1,000, so it is negative 1000 The future value is 1200 and the type of annuity again we don't we are not working with annuity so that is fine and the answer of course is the same so only difference is that when you use the template the, the assumption uh, that you enter uh, is always on a per year basis in addition to computing the implied rate of return we can also compute the time horizon and we're going to see a number of examples. In the first example, um, we're going to work with just two cash flows, uh, a amount today and an amount in the future, so present value and future value. Uh, the particular example that I chose is uh, a case where, let's say, you work for a charity or you have an organization uh, where you have some money, but you cannot spend it until you have reached a certain amount. This is actually not that unusual. This is a quite a common uh, requirement. So uh, in this particular case, a charity uh, currently has $400,000. So this is how much it has today in endowment. They can earn 10% per year. However, the donor requires that the endowment has to grow to $800,000 before the charity can spend any money. So they have to wait. The question is, how long? So how long means the time? So how long do they have to wait before they, they will be able to spend the money? So $400,000 is what they have today currently. So this is their present value. And $800,000 is what they need in the future before they can spend money. So that's the future, future value. And the 10% per year, that is your interest rate. In here, we still have to make an inflow outflow assumption. However, it's not as clear what is our inflow, what is our outflow. In this particular case, it probably does not matter a whole lot, but I tend to, I typically use the present value as an outflow. So I'll make the $400,000 the negative number, and then the future value as an inflow and keep that as a positive number. Let's go ahead and set up your own model. This is the model layout for computing the time period. So once again, uh, pause the video, go ahead and set up your model structure, and then come on back and we'll finish the model together. Okay, the time unit we are working with once again in this case is year, so that makes that easy. Uh, so that means one time per year. The interest rate is 10% per year and we don't have any annuity the present value is so said we're going to make that the outflow so we have minus 400,000 and then the future value we want the value to reach 800,000 and the question is how long so the function we'll be using is n per or n p e r so again start your function with an equal sign and then MPER, open parenthesis. Here are your input variables. The first is rate, so we have 10% 10, uh, 10 per year. Separate the input variables by a comma. Payment amount is zero. Present value is the $400,000. So you just put a comma there, and then you can use the arrow key to move up to the future value, comma again. And here is the type of annuity. So it has five arguments, uh, five input variables. Um, and to finish the function, we use the close parenthesis sign and then press enter. So you know, the charity in this case, we have to wait seven years before it can um, reach the $800,000, assuming that it earns 10% per year. I'm going to make an intentional mistake here. So let's say what happens if I forgot to put in a negative sign. You will see that it gives you an error message. 
it says uh, it is not possible. Uh, that's because you need to put in some money according to the algorithm that is in the software in order for you to receive future value. You can also use the template to solve this problem. So if you're using the template, go to the tab that says Compute MPER. So that's Compute Time. Uh, and we're going to use the same information. Again, the time unit is year. So that's one time per year. The interest rate is 10% per year. Uh, over uh, the annuity amount is zero, uh, negative $400,000 is what they have today, and they want that to grow to $800,000. Uh, of course, you get the same amount, and again, the template just converts the time unit for you automatically. The saying goes, practice makes perfect. So let's go over a few more examples. Uh, we're going to increase the, uh, we're going to add, one more input variable to this example, uh, and that also make this example a little bit more realistic. So we are going to look at an annuity example. So instead of just a single amount, we're going to look at it's a case where your, your saving is a monthly saving. So you're going to deposit $50 a month, and you're going to start at the end of the first month. Um, the account you deposit will be earning 9% per year, but it's based on monthly compounding. The question is, how much would you be able to accumulate in this account in 35 years? So it's saying here, time unit is very important. So how often do you make this deposit? You're making deposit on a monthly basis. So that means that your time unit is months. And that means we have to convert everything to monthly. I know this may seem obvious, but sometimes it can get uh, get lost in so much information that we are trying to process. So just a useful reminder that there are 12 months per year. So let's take a look at what information we have. So the $50 a month is recurring. So that is our, pay that is our annuity payment. The interest rate is 9% per year. But we need to convert that to month. So we have to divide that by 12 in order to get the interest rate per month. And then you're going to say, put this in the account for 35 years. We have to multiply that by 12 to get to the total number of months. The good news is that you don't have to create a new model. The model that you created will work. So let's go to the model that you have created to compute future value. Let's go ahead and erase the um, data from the last problem that you work with. So you just need to delete that. Make sure you don't erase the formula that you created. So uh, I color this in a different uh, color just to remind myself that's not something I want to erase. So in this problem, we already did uh, in the analysis, we know that the time unit we're working with are months. So that's what we're going to put in here. And the compounding frequency will be 12 times per year. So the interest rate, we say, is 9% divided by 12 because there are 12 months. And this is per interest rate per month. And you may want to, once again, increase the decimal places so you can see what the interest rate is. So if it's six is nine percent per year, is 075 percent per month. Same for time, you want it equals to thirty-five times twelve, because there are twelve months per year. So that's a total of four hundred and twenty months. The annuity amount is fifty dollars. We don't have any present value in this problem, so that will be zero. And the type of annuity, uh, we said this is gonna. Put, uh, they're going to deposit the money in the bank one year in one month. So that means it's going to be at the end of the first month. So the type of annuity is alternate annuity. So you may want to write that there to remind yourself. And also the $50 is $50 per month. So it turns out that if you are, if you are saving $50 per month and over 
35 years, that would have accumulated to $147,000. Not bad. And of course, you can also use the template. Uh, similar to the model, we have to uh, delete the information from the template first. So we'll delete anything that's in the blue area. Uh, so remember, our time unit for this problem is months. So there are 12 months per year. The interest rate is 9%. When you're using the template, you always enter the interest rate on a per year basis, and the template will convert that automatically for you. And the time unit is 35 years. Again, when you're using the template, we keep that as years. So this is uh, $35, uh, 35 years. And then annuity payment among this, we have to, um, we have to convert that. So this is $50 per month. So we have to make sure we enter the per month value uh, in the template. Uh, the present value is zero. The type of annuity is ordinary annuity. And the template will, of course, give you the same amount as your own personal model. So the difference between the template and your own model is uh, really in the conversion, whether or not you do the co uh, time unit con conversion as you are creating the model, or you use some uh, you use a template which is uh, pre-converted for you. Our next example involves computing the annuity amount. This is a very common uh, type of consumer credit problem. So let's say you are looking at buying a new car and after down payment, you need to borrow $20,000. Whenever you're borrowing money to buy something, the amount that you borrow is the present value. Uh, because the assumption is that you need to give that, give that money to the car dealer in order to uh, have the car. So the bank is giving you, not you maybe, the bank is giving the car dealer $20,000 today. So that's present value. Uh, the 8% that is the interest rate uh, is a 40 is a four year loan and you're asking what is the monthly payment. So as you can see, this is a very common um, consumer credit problem. The time unit we're working with here is month because you're making monthly payments. And the other implied information here, uh, we said this is $0 in future value, and that is because we assume that there is no residual value uh, that you have to uh, owe the bank. So it's a no residual balance. So the, assume that you will fully pay off the loan in four years. Uh, and most consumer loans, car loans, and home mortgage are ordinary annuity. So those are implied information, meaning that uh, these are customary. So let's go ahead and create your own model on computing annuities. So open up a new tab uh, in Google Sheet and, input and, and enter the model structure. And then when you come back, we'll create the model together. Okay, so let's go ahead and input the input variable first. So the first one is the time unit, which are months. So that means 12 times per year. And the interest rate is 8% per year compounded monthly. So that will be equal to 8% divided by 12. So again, that is per month. Let us increase the number of decimal places. So this one is a little bit less uh, pretty, is 8% uh, per year, so it's 0.6667% per month. Uh, it's a four year long, so the time period is equal to four times 12. Uh, so 48 months altogether. The present value is $20,000. There's no future value. Remember, we said that's the implication. And this is also an ordinary annuity, so we'll put zero in there. And now we can uh, use the PMT function to compute the annuity payment. So start with the equal sign. The function name is PMT. 
So open parenthesis. So start with the function name. Tap open per. So start with equal sign. Then the name of the function. Then open parenthesis. The first input variable is rate. So we will scroll up. Use our arrow key to go up to the rate, and press comma. The next input variable is number of periods. So once again, use the arrow key to go up to forty-eight comma. Present value is twenty thousand dollars comma. Future value again is zero. So comma. And this is an ordinary annuity. Now these are all the input variables. We'll finish the function by using the close parenthesis and then press enter. Notice that the payment answer is in a negative number. Again, this is the info outflow assumption. The assumption here of the of the software is that you receive twenty thousand dollars to give to the dealer. In return, you make payment of four hundred and eighty eight dollars and twenty six cents per month to pay off this loan over forty eight months. Alternatively, you can use the template.、Uh, if you're using the template, go to the tab that says that says. Compute PMT. PMT is the payment. So the、uh, we enter the same similar information.、Uh, this is a monthly payment problem. So it's twelve times per year. So this is very important for the template. The template you must enter the compounding frequency. The interest rate again we're going to put in the per year interest rate. So that's eight percent. Uh, time again we're going to enter that in number of years. So that's four years. So notice that the template automatically、uh, adjusts the unit to a per month basis. The present value is twenty thousand dollars, and future value is zero. is an ordinary annuity, so we'll put zero for ordinary annuity. And the template will give you the monthly、uh, payment amount. Once again, that's still an outflow, meaning it's a negative number. In the last example, it is a consumer loan problem.、Uh, in the next example, we're gonna look at、uh, annuity as a tool to help us with savings planning. So let's say you want to save, you want to have a million dollars in retirement, and you plan to retire in thirty years. And you currently already have a fifteen thousand dollars saved in your account. Assume that you can earn ten percent per year. But you are, your interest will be compounded on a monthly basis. How much do you have to save per month to reach your one million dollar goal? So let's break down this problem a little bit.、Uh, this is slightly more complex. So we are our problems are increasing in complexity. So first of all, your goal is to have a million dollars for retirement. So that is a, the one million dollar is your future value. The time is, and oh, the other thing important is what is the time unit? You are trying to determine how much to save per month, and interest is compounded monthly. So our time unit is months. So the time here is thirty years, but we need to convert that to months. Uh, you currently have fifteen thousand dollars. Currently means that this is already in your account. This is the beginning value of your account, so this is your present value. Assume you can earn ten percent per year compounded monthly. So your rate is ten percent, but we have to convert that to a monthly rate. So we have to divide that by twelve to get the interest rate per month. So, how much do you need to save per month to reach your goal? So, the inflow outflow assumption in here is quite important because you want to have a million dollars. You started with fifteen thousand dollars, and you need to make one of them an inflow, one of them an outflow.、Um, so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the fifteen thousand dollars an outflow. So, I'm gonna make that the present value and a negative number. And the monthly amount that you save will also be an outflow. The important thing is that your current balance and your savings amount are in the same sign. And then you're gonna be able to get back a million dollars in the future. So the future value will be an inflow. Another way to think of this is the opportunity cost. So you're giving up fifteen thousand dollars today that you already have, and you're also giving up. 
uh, more money in terms of monthly savings. So you're giving up your ability to spend those money today. So you're giving up $15,000 today and you're going to give up more money on a per month basis to reach your goal of having a million dollars to retire. So the sacrifices are going to will be represented as outflows. The good news is that once you have created the model once, you can use it over and over again. So let's clear out the blue area in your model and then we will uh, use the model you created to solve this particular problem. As we noted, the time unit we are working with is months. And that means it will be, there will be 12 compounding frequency per year. And the interest rate is 10%, but we need to divide that by 12. And that will give us our interest rate per month. This is the model that you created. And the time unit is 30, 30 years. Again, we need to multiply that by 12. So that will give us 360 months. The present value, we're going to make that an outflow. So it's an outflow of $15,000. So that's the amount that we have today. So we're going to make that an outflow, a negative number. What we want in the retirement is $1 million. So that will be an inflow of $1 million. The type of annuity is alternary annuity. We assume we're going to start saving in one month. And it turns out that you need to save $310.75 per month. And you will be assuming you have 30 years until you retire and you have a starting balance of $15,000. And you will have reached a million dollars by the time you retire. And of course, you can also use the template. And the template, again, will, empty, will erase everything that is in the blue area. So just delete that. Uh, for the time unit, once again, we're working with months, so 12 times per year. For the template, we enter the annual amount, so the rate is 10% per year, and the template will convert it to 0.83% per month. Uh, 30 years, again, the template will convert that to $360 per month, uh, 360 months. Uh, the present value is negative $150,000, and the future value is your goal of $1 million and this is an ordinary annuity. So uh, once again, you can set up your model uh, in two different ways where you, uh, in the template, the template model converts the time unit for you. Uh, in the other more simple model, you uh, use the, the time unit, uh, you enter the time unit yourself. Let's look at a couple more examples. This is a very realistic example and is of interest to a lot of consumers and, uh, and uh, individual investors. So let's say you have a credit card balance and you want to find out how long it will take for you to pay it off. So again, it says how long. So how long is time? So the, uh, the function that we're going to use to solve this problem is the n per function. NPER. And you already created that function, so we don't have to do it again. All we are doing, all we need to do is apply this problem to the tools that you already created. So you said you have a balance of $2,000 today. So balance today is present value. The APR, APR stands for annual percentage rate. So that means it's 24% per year. So this is an important financial term to understand. But you have to make monthly payments. So the time unit we are working with, once again, is month. And the minimum payment is $50 per month. The question is, how long will it take for you to pay off this balance? First, let's go to the model that you created. Uh, go to the model where you create a function for NPER. Uh, so let's erase the information that's already there and input the new problems information. So let's erase this, but don't erase the formula. And don't worry if it says error because once you put in the correct uh, information for the next problem, then the correct answer will show up. So here we said time unit is month. 
and the compounding frequency is 12 times per year. The interest rate is 24% per year. So in your own model, you need to convert that. So 24% divided by 12 is 2% per month. Uh, the amount, the annuity payment amount. So here we know that is $50 per month. So that will be minus $50. Again, we need to make an inflow versus outflow. Uh, we are making the payment, so we're going to make that the outflow. So $50 per month. The present value is $2,000 today. There's no future value. So again, the no future value assumption means that there's no outstanding balance at the end. You want to fully pay off the entire loan. Uh, it's an ordinary annuity. And the answer comes back in months. So this is where the time unit becomes important. So that's 81 months. Let's divide this by 12. So that would give us years. So that's approximately 6.77 years. So that's how long it takes to pay off your credit card if you make the minimum payment of $50. And once you have the model, you can then also experiment and ask what if questions. What happens if you, instead of making $50 the minimum payment, you double it. You pay $100 per month. It goes down quite a lot. So instead of six, uh, almost seven years, now you cut it down to only two years if you increase the payment to $100 instead of $50. That is really the most important power of creating a model to answer your questions. Next, we're going to use the template to solve this exact same problem. Uh, So get used to, uh, again, once you choose your own model or use a template, whichever you're comfortable with will give you exactly the same answer, of course. So we're working with um, months, so there will be 12%, uh, 12 compounding frequency per year. The interest rate is 24% per year, so that's the APR. Uh, the annuity payment amount in the beginning is $50, so we make that negative. The present value is $2,000, the future value is zero, and it's an ordinary annuity. So here it shows you, again, is 81 months, uh, or again, if you want to convert it into years, you can do that. And you can ask the same what if questions that you have that we did before. So say, what happens if I pay uh, more than fifty dollars per month? Uh, if I pay one hundred and fifty dollars per month, well, now it cuts down to a little over a year. So those are the important questions that you can ask uh, with the tools that you have uh, mastered in this class. Let's do one last example. And in this case, we're going to compute the interest rate. And, but this time, we're working with an annuity. So let's say you're borrowing $10,000 today. So once again, we're gonna, that is our present value because that's the, amount, the loan amount today. You agree to pay $207.59 $207 per month. So that is your annu annuity payment. You make the same amount same amount of payment every month and we can make that our outflow because that is what you are paying the bank and this is an info because that's what the bank gave to the to the car dealer and uh, this is a five-year loan so because we are working with monthly so the time unit here is months uh, we need to convert that to months so five five years times 12 will be 60 months you already created the model so all we have to do is use it so go back to your model that is computing rates and let's clear out the uh, current value and then we'll put in the value for this problem Remember that the time unit we're working with is months. So that will be 12 compounding frequency per year. And the time, the time is five years times 12. 
So that will give you 60 months. And the annuity amount is 200 negative. So that's our payment is minus 207.58. And that is per month. Again, if you can change the number of decimal places to make it uh, more, uh, more accurate. Um, the present value is $10,000 today. There's no future value. And this is an alternate annuity. So your interest rate is Again, important for us to type the time unit. We're working with months, so it's 0.75% per month. And you need to multiply this by 12 to convert it into per year. So per year is your APR. And we can change the format. So up here are the format for uh, different numbers. We can format it as a percent. And so it's 9% per year. Finally, we can use the template. So go to the template and click on the tab that says compute rate. Uh, first, once again, let us delete the exi existing information. And let's look at the, power, the uh, values from this particular power. The time unit we're working with is month. <laughs> we see that many times. So there are 12 times per year. Uh, time, so again, when we're using the template, we enter everything as years. Uh, the annuity payment amount is minus 207.58, and that is per month. Uh, the present value is $10,000. No future value, and no, this is an alternate annuity, so we enter zero. So remember in the template, the only one difference is the annuity payment amount. You, you have to enter that in the right unit. So um, not surprisingly, we got the same answer. Uh, is 0.75% per month and 9% per year. Congratulations, you have now mastered time value of money calculations. We'll be using these tools a lot throughout the rest of this, this uh, class in all your financial planning problems. We'll stop in this video here and we'll go on to the next unit uh, in the next video. See you soon.